What's up guys, Renaissance here. Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a couple months since I posted a video, but I've been super vi busy finishing up my masters and studying for the CPA exam. Um, but I I'm wanting to start uploading a bit more consistently. I'm wanting to start kind of a political series going into the 2020 election. So um, hopefully the topics will be pretty wide ranging and won't be too biased. Um, really, I just want to help educate all the voters out there. So if you're a voter, I'm, I'm here to educate you basically on, on topics that you may just have never heard of or may not be that familiar with. So um, personally, for me, nothing scares me more in this world than uh, a person who's at the polls voting for somebody and they have no clue about the candidate that they're voting for. So um, right before we get into it, I just wanted to point out I'm playing some Dark Souls 3 uh, multiplayer here. Um, just have that up in the background. Please, if you if you would rather me not have uh, Dark Souls in the background, rather a different game or no game at all, just please let me know. Um, I just feel like it kind of helps give you something to look at while you're listening. So um, let's get right into it. As you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be talking about Universal Basic Income, or UBI for short. Basically... The first week of the first Democratic debates, I believe it was two weeks ago, um, today is July 9th, they, the, the idea came up, right? The uh, universal basic income kind of kind of sprung out of nowhere, and, and we'll talk about the reasons why, but um, just to give you an idea, UBI was the like second most Googled topic or something um, after the debates in the country. Um, and the reason for that is because many people just don't really know what it is. So I just wanted to go over it a bit and, and go over some of the common questions that I've heard regarding UBI, such as how are we going to pay for it, um, you know, who gets it, and stuff like that. And I just want to clarify, I'm not advocating for UBI. Um, I'm not advocating against UBI. I'm just simply providing facts so that the people that are not familiar with these facts can educate themselves. So <laughs> always got to get that out of the way that I'm not endorsing this policy by any means. So um, so just a little, a little uh, kind of summary, I guess you could say, of, of what UBI is. Um, it's pretty much exactly how it sounds, right? It is a set amount, a, a monthly stipend paid to every single adult in the United States, regardless of their situation, um, hence the universal portion of it, right? Um, typically, the amount proposed, and, and it, UBI has been proposed in the past by a few politicians, but um, typically the amount is 500 to $1,500 in that range. Um, but specifically, the amount being proposed by, uh, by Andrew Yang, and we're gonna get into him here in a second, um, is $1,000. So $1,000 per month to every single adult in the U.S. And adult is just somebody that's over 18. Doesn't matter if you make a billion dollars a year, you make one penny a year, right? Um, I know neither one of those really are prob possible, but um, yeah, it goes to everybody. So, And I'm going to get into that here in a little bit too. But for, for those of you who are unfamiliar with, uh, with Andrew Yang... He is a, and I'm going to be, just to give you an idea, I'm going to be framing a lot of uh, this pol these policies in uh, the mindset of coming from Yang. So the reason being is he's the one who, he's the only candidate that has proposed UBI and probably will be the only candidate to propose UBI. So that's why a lot of the stuff's going to be framed from uh, his campaign's perspective. But... Um, he's a 44-year-old Democratic presidential candidate from New York, and unlike, I think, every other candidate in the race, he has zero political experience. So he's never been a senator, he's never been a House representative, he's never been in state office, he's never even been like a county administrator or supervisor or anything like that. No political experience whatsoever. He has been an entrepreneur pretty much his entire life. Um, that being said... In my opinion, he is probably the most intelligent person running for president. Um, yes, most intelligent, literally. <laughs> like I know that's hard to believe uh, with all these, you know, super smart politicians, wink, wink, um, up there. But I, I think Andrew Yang is really, really, really 
an intelligent guy, um, you know, Ivy League uh, educated. Um, and like I said, he's been an entrepreneur all his life. So the guy has signed paychecks for a living. So he uh, he's a smart dude. But let's get back to UBI. So it is by far his signature campaign promise. Um, specifically, he refers to it as a freedom dividend. Um, the reason behind that is it, it makes it more uh, more palatable, I guess you could say, to a lot of people. Um, universal basic income and make no mistake it is welfare um, UBI is is an extreme form of welfare but when you call it freedom dividend it doesn't really sound uh, quite as welfare ish if that makes sense so that is the reason they're calling it that um, and what I found interesting with Yang his reasoning behind UBI is, is vastly different than um, a lot of folks and and probably will surprise some of you um, you know he's not doing it well he is doing it for a very specific specific reason um, Yang believes basically that in the next 30 to 50 years over probably like a third of American workers will be displaced at their jobs by some form of automation so yeah like robots taking over basically no i'm just kidding not robots taking over but robots doing uh you know taking a lot of jobs in the workforce and this is actually in line with numerous studies so he isn't far off here um basically anything from car manufacturers to, to fast food employees to re retail you know people like retail cashiers and whatnot um a third of those jobs are going to go they're going to be automated in the next couple decades so why he's proposing ubi is he simply wants to give those millions of displaced americans a way to stay on their feet during that time um which i get so but he goes even further and wants every adult american from the poorest to the richest to still receive that one thousand dollar stipend each month so um, many of the other people are in the past that have proposed uh, universal basic income they usually base their stipend on you know the current income level of the individual or their age or you know if they're searching for work or whatnot um, which sounds a lot more welfare typish but his like I said his proposal eliminates that that big welfare criticism of UBI and the fact that every single person receives the stipend and I can't stress keep stressing that enough that you know if you're 18 and uh, broke and in college you're and not working you're just going to school you're getting a thousand bucks a month if you're warren buffett <laughs> or bill gates you're getting a thousand bucks a month i know that sounds weird but hey it uh it's 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 not so much welfare by definition because it's fairly distributed to everyone so and it's it's also not socialism so i i i'm, I'm not really going to get into that too much because I, I don't want this to be like a really politically biased video but um socialism is when the government controls the means of production um that's not what this is you're not the means of production are not being controlled you're just uh you know you're and they redistribute it but they are they are redistributing wealth for sure uh, but they're doing it evenly to everyone so that's good um but again he's the only one calling for it so now now that we've kind of got that out of the way um the biggest question by far and you already know what it is about ubi is how the hell do we pay for it right you know um yang's team and this is a you know probably a conservative estimate um from his own team has estimated the cost of ubi you ready for this 2.8 trillion trillion with a t dollars per year um that's an enormous amount of money so how are we paying for this exactly well yang's got a couple of uh different different uh, methods i guess you could say so um the simplest way to pay for it is by adding a value-added tax or a vat as it's usually known um if you're unaware of what a vat is it's, it's simply a consumption tax on on goods um if that still doesn't really ring a bell to you um, a good example is uh, think of it as like a manufacturer buys it or a manufacturer makes something so um, like a bike or a trampoline something like that so they make a trampoline um, when the manufacturer buys the raw materials to make that trampoline like they buy the rubber they buy the springs they buy the, the you know tarp or whatever 
they're gonna pay a VAT on those materials, a VAT tax on those materials, you know, whatever the percentage is. And that money's gonna, you know, go to the government. So next, the manufacturer will sell that trampoline to a retailer who will also pay a VAT tax on, uh, on, the, on the trampoline. And then finally, when the consumer goes to purchase the trampoline, they will also pay a fat tax. So, um, huge increase in taxes. But uh, typically, a lot of the times, people that propose VAT taxes um, usually are proponents of eliminating stuff like sales tax because they don't want consumers to be taxed twice uh, effectively. So, um, I, again, I'm not going to get into uh, VAT taxes too much, but um, I'll let y'all decide if that's the right way to go. I will say that dozens of countries, including the EU, have implemented successfully VAT taxes. Um, some of them are as high as 20%, though. Um, so it's not a foreign concept. It's just it, it, it is uh, foreign outside of the United States, if that makes sense. So, um, again, I just wanted to educate you on the topic. I'll let you all decide if that's the right way to go for America. But either way. Yang's proposed VAT tax supposedly would generate uh, roughly a trillion dollars in new revenue for the government. I think it's like 800, million, uh, 800 billion to a trillion. So that's, that's still that's a lot of money from taxes there, but it's still, you know, quite a large number off. So believe it or not, it's not so much that Yang wants to do this, but it, he and his team have concluded that... Um, because of UBI's existence, a lot of other welfare will be eliminated. Um, effectively, what he said is, or essentially what he said is, um, you know, if you're getting UBI, you can't get other welfare. You can't get, I mean, you still get like Social Security and Medicare and all that, but you can't get, uh, uh, what's it called, um, like food stamps and stuff like that. You can't get that if you're getting UBI. So um, essentially, the UBI <clears throat> option is what in his opinion most people would choose over that so which makes sense i mean a thousand dollars a month you know pretty good deal so um but assuming people choose or chose uh, ubi over these other welfare programs they're estimating like a 500 billion dollar savings um i don't know how accurate that is but um that is one way you would help pay for this so um, and, and the biggest thing, though, for Yang, <clears throat> excuse me, is that he's assuming that the $2.8 trillion, right, that it's going to cost um, to implement UBI, they're assuming that that amount of money is going to get poured back into the economy, right? Basically like a stem shot to the economy. Well, so the thing is, he's not wrong 100% here. A large chunk of that is, is 100% going to be put back in the economy. But a lot of it's not. Why? Well, because the VAT tax, right? So um, now consumers are going to be paying VAT taxes on that on that $2.8 trillion, assuming they're spending it on stuff. Um, so again, I'm, I, I have a lot of feels about this, but I'm not going to get too political with it. Um, it just seems like a, a really lofty expectation to assume that all of that money is going to go right back into the economy. Um, furthermore, like I know me personally, I would just save it, right? <laughs> you know, um, it, and I think a lot of other people, I think, you know, hundreds of thousands of other people that are kind of like middle class to upper middle class, they would just throw that $1,000 in the bank and save it. So that's not a stem shot to the economy. That's one of the big talking points against raising taxes usually on the wealthy is, uh, you know, a lot of them just save the money anyway, and they don't actually use it to, to, you know, further the economy. So it just seems like a really roundabout way of getting there. And, and speaking on uh, taxes on the wealthy, of course, um, it wouldn't be a Democratic presidential candidate if he didn't propose some sort of tax increase on the wealthy. Um, specifically, his uh, tax is very similar to what Elizabeth Warren has proposed, essentially a Wall Street transaction tax. Um, again, for those of you unaware, essentially every stock or option transaction will be hit with a small penalty, a small tax. So not a t it's not the same as capital gains tax, right? It's not, or, or, or any kind of revenue-related tax. This is simply a tax based on trades. So you go and buy 50 shares of stock, boom, you, you're getting a tax. <laughs> Whether Or if you sell it at a, at a loss, you're still getting a tax. So it, it's a little funky, but... 
Again, I'm not sure how much this would bring in or how uh, well, <laughs> not well liked, but well received this uh, proposal would be. But um, I do know that Warren estimated hers to be able to completely fund a Medicare for All bill. Um, so I know that it would be over a trillion dollars that this would bring in. So that about covers how it would be paid for in theory. Um, another big question, though, that opponents have of universal basic income is kind of with all these free incentives why would people keep working or why would some people keep working or would they quit working um, is more more of a way to say it so um, some studies have indicated that the the opposite would actually happen and that that extra thousand dollars would simply take the pressure off of low-income families to pay the bills and yet still continue working at their current level so Think of a, 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 a single mom with two kids, you know, she makes 40 grand a year, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, lower middle income, I guess, probably on the lower end of the income spectrum, you know, especially with two children. That extra thousand dollars, she's not going to quit working. That thousand dollars, and she's not going to be able to save it because she's struggling anyway. That thousand dollars is just going to help her keep her head above water i guess you could say so so that makes sense and then like i said plenty of studies have indicated that this would be true that that extra thousand dollars would encourage people to continue working as opposed to encouraging people that are already working to stop working if that makes sense um but <laughs> flip side of that coin what about the people who are already unemployed and they're not actively seeking work well this uh would be more likely uh, a drag on the economy. So a large number of people here, you, you, you hear the word welfare queen being thrown around a lot these days. People that just sit on their butt, collect a check, and that's the end of it. Um, these people already don't have an inclination to, to even attempt to work. I, this is not a um, large portion of the population, mind you. Very small minority of the population. But it would still... Probably that would be enhanced if UBI were enacted, right? So because UBI comes with no strings attached, like you don't even have to be looking for work, um, you're still entitled to that money regardless. So the people trying to that are getting that money that are not trying to work, they're probably still not going to try to work. It's just free money for them. So I'm not going to get into all the drugs, the drug addict kind of stuff, like crackheads out there and everything, but. Um, also, Yang's proposing Medicare for all, so that combined with UBI, he's basically saying that you know drug usage would go down, so this wouldn't be an issue. I'm not going to get into that. I don't really buy that, but either way, different video, different topic. So that that pretty much does it um, for the facts as it relates to UBI. Again, I don't want to get too deep into my political opinions here, and I do have quite a few, but. Looking at UBI on a high level, like high policy type level, I honestly do not see it being implemented in the U.S. anytime soon. Um, again, as I mentioned, Yang is the only candidate calling for it, and let's be honest, he's super unknown, um, not a whole lot of money. He's probably not going to make it to the New Hampshire primaries, if I had to guess. Um, but that being said, I do think Yang has illustrated to the nation um, a good path to get to UBI. So again, I'm not advocating for it, but I do think he he has illustrated a way that we could get there. So um, I don't necessarily agree with that path, but I can see how it would be done. Um, so as far as like the VAT taxes go and stuff like that, again, we're already taxed at really high levels, and I'm not going to get super into the VAT tax stuff. But uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, and that is the bulk of what pays for the UBI, supposedly. So, um, but that being said, I appreciate that Yang is calling for, um, you know, a true U UBI in which every single uh, adult receives that money, not just the poor. Um, now I know how that sounds, but but hear me out here. Um, UBI is only truly universal if it's fair to everyone, unlike the current welfare system that we have now. So. Um, your mileage may vary on, on your opinion of that, but um, that, that pretty much does it for me, guys, um, for, my, for my video on universal basic income. Um, as I said earlier, I plan on making 
more political videos in the future, primarily related to the 2020 elections coming up next year. Um, so I hope you stick around for them and can get something productive from them and just become a more informed voter. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you've learned something, please hit that like button for me and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future. I would really appreciate it, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.